Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing Sennelier's Artist Quality Watercolour Paints and in particular this 12 set of tube paints that comes in a neat metal tin. So I'll be swatching each of the watercolours out, looking into the properties of the individual paints and then I'll put them to the test in this sketchbook painting of two bright macaw parrots. So I hope you enjoy the video. I bought this watercolour set from Jackson's Art Supplies for £57 and first tried them out a few weeks back when I painted some colourful red berries and I'll put a link to that video in a card above if you've missed it or want to go and check it out. The tin opens out to reveal two large mixing areas and 12 10ml tubes and it also comes with a size 3 round paintbrush. The last time I used this set I put a small blob of paint of each of the colours I wanted to use on the flip out part of the palette and before we get swatching I wanted to just let you know of one of the downsides I found when going to use them again today. For those of you who haven't come across them before, Sennelier watercolours are formulated with honey, both to act as a preservative and to add vibrancy and luminosity to the paints, which is great. However, the downside to this is that the paints do take longer to dry on the palette, and in the warmer weather like we're having now, the previously dried paint can almost melt a bit and go a bit sticky. Some of this paint also transferred onto the tube, so I had to wipe them off before I got started, which was a bit annoying. To try and avoid this, I could try and use the mixing wells on the other side, or simply clean off the palette before I close the tin, but that seems like a waste of paint. So rather than add more paint to this palette, I'll be using a separate plastic palette as well. But I'd be really interested to know if any of you have had this problem, and if so, how you get round it. Now with that said, let's get swatching, and I've cut out a piece of watercolour paper to fit neatly into the tin, and drawn out some columns so I can add in all the information on the different properties of the individual colours too. I'm going to use the brush that came with the set to swatch out the colours, and I'll be using paint straight from the tube, but I'll use up the leftover paint on the tin when I come to paint the parrots, and give you my final thoughts and opinions on Sennelier watercolours and what I think of this set. So I'm going to paint the swatches out first and then I'll add in all the other info like pigment numbers and so on once they're dry. The first colour in the set is lemon yellow and on squeezing it out of the tube I could definitely feel a difference in consistency compared to my other tube watercolours, which I assume is the honey in it. The paint laid down really smoothly though and does look really bright. Next is another yellow and this one is Sennelier Yellow Light. It's a warmer yellow this time than the lemon yellow and again lays down really smoothly. On to the reds next and rather unsurprisingly for a French brand we have French Vermilion. But just look at how rich and vibrant that colour is. The second red in this set is simply called Sennelio Red and in comparison to the Vermilion is more of a cooler red, so in terms of colour choices it seems quite a good mix so far. Opera Rose is next and again this is super bright and vibrant and without any purples in this set will come in useful for mixing brighter less muddy purples with blue than if you were to use either of the reds. And speaking of blues, the first blue we have is Ultramarine Deep, which I'm really pleased about as I use this a lot in my painting, either on its own or often mixed in with, say, Burnt Sienna to get a nice grey, for example. The second blue is Thalo Cyanine Blue, which I have to say is not a colour I'm familiar with at all, but looks similar to the Cerulean Blue Hue in my Schmincke set. It's super dark and rich and pigmented and I'm looking forward to trying it out in a painting. Okay, on to the greens next and the first of these is a colour called Forest Green, which may be a bit of a surprise as it's not your standard green that you might expect to see in a 12 tube set. Nonetheless, if you're into painting landscapes or botanicals, I think this colour will be really useful. Thalo Green Light is the second warmer green in this set as it leans more towards yellow than blue. It's not quite a sap green which I think is a shame as I use quite a lot of that, 
but I guess you can always mix your own green using the colours you do have. Next up are the browns and a grey and being that I paint a lot of animals I was really pleased to see burnt sienna. I've tried a few different burnt siennas and often these more earthy tones can be disappointing but I was quite pleased with this one which is just as well really as I ordered another tube of it the other day by mistake. Like someone commented though you can never have too much burnt sienna. A bit out of order now, I'm swatching the Payne's Grey, and this is super rich and very pigmented. There's no black or indigo in this set, so it will be really useful for mixing those, as well as neutralising or dulling down some of the bright colours should you want or need to. The last colour I have here is Warm Sepia, which is another colour I use quite a lot in my animal paintings. And like all the others, it lays down smoothly and has a good range of tones when diluted with water. So now I'm going to go quickly through the different properties of each of the 12 colours. And this wasn't something I used to be too bothered about when I first started out in watercolour. But knowing a bit about the different pigments that are in your paints can really help with colour mixing. And knowing whether your watercolour is transparent or opaque, for example, can help you decide what techniques you're going to use in your final piece. So I've included it here in this part of the review. So the lemon yellow in this set contains pigment PY3, is transparent and has a light fast rating of 2, where 1 is the highest. The Sennelier Yellow Light contains pigment PY153, is also transparent and has a light fast rating of 1. And if you're wondering what the black line I've drawn down the page is, it's so I can see the transparency or opacity for myself at a glance. French Vermilion is next and this beautifully vibrant colour contains pigment PR242. It has a light fast rating of 1 and is classed as being opaque. Although I have to say it doesn't seem to cover up my black line as much as I would have expected an opaque watercolour to do. But how transparent or opaque a colour is will also depend on how much water you add to dilute it, so that's worth bearing in mind too. Our second red, Sennelia Red, contains pigment PR254 and is transparent, but sadly, along with the Opera Rose, has NR next to its light fast rating, meaning not rated. This, however, is only really going to be a problem if you are planning on selling original artwork, but it's useful to know. The Opera Rose then contains pigment PR81 colon 1. It's transparent and, like I said earlier, doesn't have a light fast rating. The colon after the pigment number, by the way, I think represents the shade of the colour where 1 is red. Ultramarine Deep Next, which is another single pigment colour containing pigment PB29. It's again transparent with a light fast rating of 1. Thalo Cyanine Blue, on the other hand, has a light fast rating of 2, but is also transparent. It contains pigment PB15 colon 3, and the colon 3 here represents the green shade you can see in it. These Sennelier paints don't specify if a colour is staining or not but thalo colours are synthetic and do stain, so they can't be lifted off your paper like non-staining pigments. Moving on to the greens now and forest green, which is made from three pigments, PBK7, PG7 and PY42. It has a light fast rating of 1 and is semi-transparent. The thalo green light on the other hand is transparent with a light fast rating of 2 and contains two pigments, PG7 and PY153. Watercolour paints with multiple pigments in them can be fine, but sometimes if you want to mix them with other colours, they can go a bit muddy, depending on what colour you're trying to mix it with. So, on to the last few now and Burnt Sienna, a transparent paint containing PBR7 with a light fast rating of 1. And for the next two colours we have first Payne's Grey containing three pigments PV19, PBK7 and PB15 colon 1. And lastly Warm Sepia which contains two pigments PBR7 and PBK7. 
and both of these two colours are semi-transparent with a light fast rating of 1. So to sum up then, out of the 12 watercolours, 8 are single pigments, 8 of them are transparent, 3 are semi-transparent and 1 is opaque, and 7 out of the 12 have a light fast rating of 1. So now I'm going to try and test as many of these colours out as I can in a single painting, and what better subject than a colourful parrot or two. I'm using my A5 etch sketchbook again for this, and will be using my size 8 silver black velvet brush and my size 2 Princeton snap brush. I'm also going to use this black Copic multiliner to mark in the tiny details on the parrot's eyes and beak, but I'll list everything down in the description box with a reference photo from Pixabay. Whilst I'm painting this, I'm going to go through what I liked, as well as a few things I didn't like so much about Sennelier watercolours and this 12 tube metal tin set. But of course, don't forget that this is just my opinion, so take from it what you will. Ok, so let's go through the cons first, and I think you'll have guessed that I wasn't too impressed with the design of the tin, given that these paints take such a long time to dry on the palette and so on. So they definitely wouldn't be paints I would recommend to anyone to take out and about or travel with, for example. There's also the fact that the tubes themselves aren't secured or clipped into the tin in any way. What I might do in future is to either use a separate palette again like I did today and keep it on my desk or half fill some half pans and see if they survive in a tin without going sticky and making a mess. But if you've tried Snellier watercolours and have a solution or a way around this problem then do please drop me a comment in the box below. On a more positive note though, I can't help but love painting with these Sennelier watercolours and whether it be wet on wet or wet on dry or whatever technique you want to use, they really are super bright, luminous and fun to paint with. The colours may not always have the same generic names as I'm used to and it would have been nice if there were a few more neutrals in the set for what I like to paint normally, but the vibrancy of the colours included in this set almost forced me to be a bit more daring and brave from the start instead of building up like layers gradually like I usually do. They also did lay down really smoothly and there seemed to be very little colour shift when they dried which was good too. So for anyone wanting super bright, fun colours, you really can't go wrong, and I would definitely recommend giving them a try if you get the chance. I also think that the price of this set is pretty good too, because you are getting 10 mil tubes, not 5 mils, so it works out at just £4.75 for each tube, which isn't bad at all. I also like that you can buy replacement tubes or additional colours open stock which would enable you to customise your tin to your needs or even try out a few colours before you buy the whole set. But I actually didn't dislike the choice of colours that came in the set as it was as they are quite a good balance of warm and cool colours and you can always experiment and mix your own colours too. For the parrot's yellow feathers here for example, I laid down some of the Sennelier yellow light onto dry paper and then dropped in some ultramarine deep, letting the colours bleed and mix together on the paper and create a green colour that I could see on my reference photo. I then carried a light wash of the same ultramarine colour down over the parrot's tail feathers with a view to defining some of the individual feathers later on with some negative painting. On the blue feathers in shadow here though, I tried to use stronger colours and more concentrated watercolour right from the start, to reduce the amount of layers I'd need to apply as this will help with vibrancy and luminosity with whatever watercolour paints you're using. But not all the colours on the parrot were super bright, so for these darker tail feathers underneath the bird here, I mixed a more muted tone by mixing in some warm sepia to the ultramarine deep. And for the areas that were darker still, I added in some Payne's Grey to the ultramarine and sepia mix. And dropped in some French Vermilion here too. Once that had dried, I could move on to the long tail feathers, and these I painted wet on dry with my size 2 snap brush, so I could more easily control the paint and leave some areas white.
Then it was back to the first parrot again to define some of the feather shapes and glaze over some more greens and blues before painting in some really bright red tail feathers with more vermilion. I added in some yellow to the wet paint here too and really loved how the paints mix together so smoothly and easily. Next for the branch I wanted to go really bold and dark so once I'd pre-wet the whole of the paper here I dropped in first concentrated sepia and then Payne's grey and I really liked how easy and quick it was. I also wanted to add a bit more colour and feather detail to this parrot's red feathers here and did this using a bit of negative painting again and softened out any edges with a clean damp brush. Now it's time for the background and I mentioned a bit about my dislike or fear of doing backgrounds on last week's video and how I want to try and improve on that. So with this one I switched back up to my size 8 brush and began by pre-wetting a bit of the paper around the parrot. My idea was to just be really bold, loose and expressive with this one and try not to fiddle with it too much. So I loaded up my brush with some of the forest green colour and just went for it. I added in a bit of the thalo green light too and repeated it on the other side. This time though I didn't pre-wet the paper quite so much and ended up with some dry brush texture and I actually really like how rich and bold this turned out. All that was left to do now was to balance out the rest of the painting to match. So I added another glaze of the French Vermilion onto the red feathers again and despite supposedly being the only opaque colour in this set, when diluted it was able to add another pop of colour without covering up the feather detail underneath. I also used some of the semi-transparent forest screen that I'd used for the background to darken up some of the wing feathers and help tie the background in. Just a few more finishing touches and this sketchbook painting was complete and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out and I actually really feel like painting it again on a bigger scale. Anyway let me know what you think and let me know as well what your opinion is of Sennelier paints if you've ever used them yourself before. If you like the video please give it a like and a share and if you're new to my channel please subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified as soon as I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching, take care, have a great weekend and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.